Hello learners, I am Dr. Madhumati, the Deputy Coordinator of the Early Childhood Education and Administration course at Srimati VHC Central Institute of Home Science, Bangalore. Today I am here to teach you all about Sigmund Freud's Psychoanalytical Theory of Counseling. To give you an introduction on this topic, the word therapy is derived from the Greek word of therapia meaning healing. Psychotherapy means healing the mind or the soul. A therapeutic process involves the steps of diagnosing an illness, identifying the treatment procedure and implementing the treatment plan effectively. Any psychological conditions can be overcome only when all these steps have been properly followed. The learning objectives of this particular module is to understand the meaning of psychoanalysis, to learn about the key concepts that is the counseling process and techniques of psychoanalysis and to understand the psychoanalytical theory of counseling. Now we will see some of the background information available to us about Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytical theory. Sigmund Freud lived from 1856 to 1939. He was a neurologist of Austrian origin. He was known as the father of psychoanalysis. He was the founder of the psychoanalytical school of psychology. He proposed that the motives of the unconscious mind controls much of human behavior. According to him, specific unconscious thoughts and memories, especially sexual and aggressive ones, are the sources of neurosis. He felt that neurosis could be treated by bringing out these unconscious thoughts and memories to the consciousness through psychoanalytical therapy. He developed the techniques of free association and dream analysis or the talking cure. The psychoanalytic theory proposes that thoughts, memories and desires exist below our consciousness and exert a significant influence on behavior. Therapists who practice psychoanalysis are called as psychoanalysts and they believe in the existence of the unconscious revealed in dreams, slips of the tongue or sexual drives etc. This theory attempts to explain a long list of phenomena including personality, mental disorders, motivation and behavior in terms of the unconscious. This theory proposes that things in the depth of our psyche or unconscious need to be integrated with our conscious minds in order to produce a healthy personality. According to this theory, the client is ignorant and is not aware of the reason of his problems and difficulties. These reasons are deeply embedded in the unconscious. The client is therefore helpless and needs help. Sigmund Freud states that the problems faced by adults are mainly due to their repressed feelings. Psychoanalysis is a method of bringing out these repressed feelings. So far we have understood the nature of the psychoanalytical therapy. Now let us examine the advantages and disadvantages of this therapy. It focuses on aspects of human personality and it is used to treat a wide variety of conditions. It is particularly suited for problems to do with personalities and past and present relationships. The goals of psychoanalysis are client self-awareness and understanding of the influences of the past and present behavior. In its simplest form, a psychodynamic approach enables the client to examine unresolved conflicts and symptoms that arise from earlier dysfunctional relationships which manifest themselves in the need and desire to abuse substances. The only disadvantage of this type of therapy is that it is time consuming and also expensive.
Now, let us find out more about Freud's perception of psychological development in childhood. These are called as the psychosexual stages because each stage represents the fixation of libido or sexual drives or instincts on a different area of the body. As a child gets older, certain areas of their body become important as sources of potential frustration or they are also called as erogenous zones, pleasure or both. He viewed personality development as a great gradual succession of stages. He proposed that each stage is characterized by a dominant mode of achieving libidinal pleasure by specific developmental tasks. According to Freud, the individual is psychically not fully formed at birth. The child has no real awareness of self and is an unconscious mass of instinctive desires which is seeking to fulfill the pleasure principle. The child assumes that it is the world complete and self-sufficient. The child is thus totally driven to seek pleasure for getting immediate satisfaction. Freud believed that personality characteristics are well established by the age of six years. Gratification during each stage is important to avoid fixation. The five developmental stages of Freud's psychosexual stages are the psychosexual stages as described by Sigmund Freud start at stage 1 which is the oral stage. It spans from 0 to 18 months where the main area of focus is the pleasure zone where the mouth is involved. The activities like sucking, biting and chewing are most prominent. In the second stage that is the anal stage, the uh, age group of this stage spans from 18 to 36 months where the pleasure zone focuses on bowel and bladder control and elimination and also coping with the demands for the control of these areas. The third stage which is termed as the phallic stage spans from 3 to 6 years where the pleasure zone is the genitals and also the coping of incestuous feelings is seen here. In the latency stage, the children between 6 years to puberty are set to undergo this stage and there are dormant or inactive sexual feelings that are prominently seen. In the last stage, that is the genital stage, which starts from pu puberty onwards, there will be a maturation of sexual interest in the children. Let us see how Sigmund Freud viewed human nature. He did not give importance to the influence of the social environment. He believed that human personality consists of three elements that is id, ego and the superego. According to him, the id is the source of all energy and functions on the pleasure principle. It is full of desires. The ego functions on the reality principle and often turns down the demands of id. When this happens, tensions develop between the id and ego and they cause mental disorders. The superego is the moral governor of the individual or the conscience. Let us now know more about the three elements the id, ego and the superego. The id is a reservoir of unconscious psychic energy constantly striving to satisfy basic drives to survive, reproduce and also show aggression. The id operates on the pleasure principle and it seeks immediate gratification. Ego is the conscious executive part of the personality and according to Freud, ego mediates uh, the demands of the id superego and reality. The ego operates on the reality principle satisfying the id's desires 
in ways that will realistically bring pleasure rather than pain. The ego stands in between both to balance our primitive needs and our moral and ethical beliefs. A healthy ego provides the ability to adapt to reality and interact with the outside world in a way that accommodates both id and superego. What does the superego do then? It represents internalized ideals and provides standards for judgment, that is, the consciousness, and for future aspirations. It is the conscience which helps the individual to choose between right and wrong or good and bad. Let us now learn about the word catharsis, which is derived from a Greek word meaning cleansing or purification. It describes a sudden and dramatic change in emotion occurring as the result of experiencing strong feelings such as sorrow, fear, pity, or even laughter. It can be described as the moment when a person clearly remembers and shares a past memory with the psychotherapist. The person will be able to feel the pain fully and after the cathartic episode, the person will be free from that pain of the past. According to psychoanalytical theory, this emotional release is linked to a need to release unconscious conflicts. The end result is a positive change and Freud described catharsis as an involuntary, instinctive body process, for example, crying. Freud also talks about fixation. Fixation means a persisting focus on pleasure-seeking energies at a previous psychosexual stage where conflicts were unresolved. It is characterized by a strong attachment to a person or thing, especially such an attachment formed during early childhood and later expressed as immature or neurotic behavior that remains throughout life. Another of Freud's controversial concept is the Oedipal complex, where a boy's sexual desire for his mother and the feelings of jealousy and hatred for the rival father is called as the Oedipal complex. There is an unconscious desire of a boy for his mother, desire to replace his father. Freud also mentions castration anxiety, which is the conscious or unconscious fear of losing all or part of the sex organs. He speaks of Electra complex in girls, where a girl desires for her father and she has an unconscious desire to replace her mother. The penis envy refers to the theorized reaction of a girl during her psychosexual development to the realization that she does not have a penis. According to Freud, children cope with threatening feelings by repressing them and by identifying with the rival parent. Through this process of identification, their superego gains strength and motivates them to incorporate their parents' values into their personalities. Now let us see what Freudian slips are. Freudian slips are called as parapraxia. They are verbal slips of the tongue or a mistake in speech or writing. They are believed to reveal an unconscious and repressed motive, wish, attitude, belief, thought or emotion. They are usually excused as harmless mistakes. But Freudians believe that there are no such things as mistakes or items that are misplaced. According to psychoanalytical thinking, there is an unconscious motivation for everything we do. If we cannot remember a person's name, there is a reason for it. If we, rip, if we misplace our keys, there is a reason for that too. Now let us examine the counseling process of the psychoanalytical therapy. The primary goal of the counseling process in psychoanalysis is to help the client to accept and to bring forward the unconscious thoughts and feelings into the conscious mind. It is the transfer of psychic or mental energy between the levels of consciousness within people's minds. 
In classical psychoanalysis, the bringing of unconscious thoughts and feelings to consciousness is brought about by techniques like free association and dream analysis. Analysis or interpretation of dreams is also a central part of therapy. Psychoanalysis emphasizes the importance of unconscious influences on how people behave and function in life situations. Psychotherapy aims to increase a client's abilities to gain greater conscious control over their lives and develop a strong ego. Therapy is long term and focuses on exploring unconscious issues through interpretation, dream analysis, free association, transference and other methods. The therapist is detached, objective and neutral so that the client can project in, onto the therapist things from the client's unconscious. Freud noted that during psychoanalysis the following events occur. The first one in this sequence is resistance. Resistance is a patient's stubborn refusal to report certain thoughts, motives and experiences. The patient may also resist the analyst's interpretations. Resistance occurs because patients wish to avoid experiencing anxiety as painful thoughts are brought closer to consciousness during psychoanalysis. The second process is transference. Psychoanalysis is also characterized by a lack of direct involvement on the part of the analyst which is meant to encourage the patient to project thoughts and feelings onto the analyst. This process is called transference and the patient can reenact and resolve repressed conflicts, especially childhood conflicts with parents. Traditionally, transference is a projection of unconscious desires onto the ther therapist. Patients react towards the analyst as they did to someone who played a crucial role in their early lives, for example, one of their parents. Thus, through transference, a patient may express intense feelings of love or hate towards the analyst. Freud believed that as a patient's insight increases, transference gradually decreases. The last one here is counter-transference, where projections are made by the therapist onto the client through a process called as counter-transference. Now let us study some of the techniques used in psychoanalysis. Several techniques were suggested by Sigmund Freud and they were used to uncover the unconsciousness. I will be telling you about a few of them. The first one in this list is free association. Free association is a technique used in psychoanalytical therapy to help patients learn more about what they are thinking and feeling. Freud used free association to help his patients discover the unconscious thoughts and feelings that had been repressed or ignored. When his patients became aware of these unconscious thoughts or feelings, they were feeling better and they were able to manage them or change problematic behaviors in themselves. In traditional psychoanalysis, the patient lies on a cot with the analyst sitting near the head so that the patient is not looking at the analyst. The patient is then asked to say whatever comes to his or her mind. The psychoanalysts believe that the repressed thoughts and subconscious thoughts and conflicts will be given freedom to come out through the conscious mind in this manner. Initially, there is a great struggle within the patient to share his or her innermost thoughts. This is termed as resistance. During the free association, the analyst must remain patient and also non-judgmental. The interpretation of dreams is also an important work of Sigmund Freud and the, one of the most significant contributions that he has made into uh, learning about the unconscious mind. The concept of the unconscious was groundbreaking in that 
Sigmund Freud proposed that awareness existed in layers and that they were thoughts occurring below the surface. Dreams, which he called the royal road to unconsciousness, provided the best access to our unconscious life. Sigmund Freud argued that the unconscious exists and described a method for gaining access to it. According to him, all dreams are centered around a person's life and are under the person's psychic control. Every dream is a revelation of an unfulfilled wish. Freud said that the initial wish is fought by the ego and thus is pushed back into the conscious mind by means of a dream. He believed every dream to be a confession. Repressed anxious thoughts, unfulfilled sexual desires and expressions of guilt. He said that nightmares were caused due to self-punishment from the superego. Now let us examine a major contribution of Sigmund Freud which is defense mechanisms. According to Freud, the defense mechanisms are the methods by which the ego can solve the conflicts between the superego and the id. They are ways through which people deal with stresses in their lives. They are used as a means to try to solve problems, hide or counterbalance feelings or actions. Defense mechanisms do not usually get rid of the problem and are often negative, are not a very effective way to deal with stress and their overuse or reuse rather than confrontation can lead to either anxiety or guilt which may also result in psychological disorders such as depression. Some of the defense mechanisms are denial, reaction formation, displacement, repression or suppression, projection, intellectualization, rationalization, compensation and so on. Let me tell you what denial is. Denial means that someone will not, that is deliberately, admit to the truth. The person doesn't acknowledge the validity of the matter, but acknowledges its presence. For example, an alcoholic expresses, I may like to drink, but I am not an alcoholic. Or a smoker concludes that the evidence linking cigarette smoking to health problems is false. Then there is reaction formation, another defense mechanism. That takes place when someone takes the opposite approach consciously compared to what he wants unconsciously. For example, because he or she claims they are inferior when unconsciously it is he himself who feels inferior. Then there is displacement, which is another defense mechanism. It involves taking out our frustrations, feelings and impulses on people or objects that are less threatening. Displaced aggression is a common example of this defense mechanism. Rather than express our anger in ways that could lead to negative consequences, like arguing with our boss or teacher, we instead express our anger towards a person or object that poses no threat, such as our spouse, children, or pets. Let me tell you about another defense mechanism, which is termed as repression. Here, the person forces the unacceptable or threatening feeling out of awareness to a point where he or she becomes unaware of it. An example could be when a person is asked, how do you get along with your mother? And he responds, just fine, but he turns pale. Negative feelings about the mother are so unacceptable that he represses his true feelings. Next, there is projection. The person attributes one's own perceived negative attributes onto someone else. For example, Mohan blames the teacher for a bad grade even though he didn't study. Or Savita says, you envy me when actually Savita is the one who envies the other person or a person cheats on his spouse and blames the spouse for cheating. 
Intellectualization is an interesting defense mechanism again. It involves removing one's self emotionally from a stressful event. Intellectualization is often accomplished through rationalization rather than accepting reality. For example, a person who loses his dog in an accident may say, our dog is really better off dead. He was feeble and also he was going blind. Rationalization is the next defense mechanism which occurs when we tell an element of truth but deny the larger truth of the matter. For example, I could have won the race but the track was wet. The larger truth was that someone else was actually faster or I got fired because the boss was not a good man. Failures are a threat to the ego, while rationalization reduces the hurt. Compensation is another defense mechanism, which occurs when someone takes up one behavior because one cannot accomplish another behavior. For example, the second born child may clown around to get attention since the older child is already an accomplished scholar. Sublimation is another defense mechanism. It allows us to act out unacceptable impulses by converting these behaviors into a more acceptable form. It is the channeling of impulses to socially accepted behaviors. For example, a person experiencing extreme anger might take up kickboxing as a means of venting frustration. Freud believed that sublimation was a sign of maturity that allows people to function normally in socially acceptable ways. So this is one of the positive defense mechanisms as Freud identified it. Regression is when adult defense mechanisms stop working for us. So we then regress to a personality which we had at our childhood days. For example, when an adult doesn't take responsibility, he says, it's not my fault, it's hers. Immature patterns of behavior emerge such as bragging and blaming. The greatest problems arise when defense mechanisms are overused in order to avoid dealing with problems. In psychoanalytical therapy, the goal may be to help the client uncover these unconscious defense mechanisms and find better, more healthy ways of coping with anxiety and distress. To summarize, we can say that psychodynamic therapy is used in treatment to help patients understand themselves fully. This approach involves learning to identify unconscious conflicts and assisting clients to understand how certain types of adverse childhood experiences have left them feeling troubled, incomplete, anxious, or insecure. Such a situation usually reduces productivity in an adult. It is based on the belief that our mental well-being is influenced by unconscious conflicts, significant childhood experiences, and painful feelings that are hidden behind a variety of defense mechanisms. Freud's model of psychosexual development has been criticized from different perspectives. Some have objected to Freud's claim that infants are sexual beings and Freud's expanded notion of sexuality. Others have accepted Freud's concept and some critics have argued that this pattern of development is neither universal nor necessary for the development of a healthy adult. Instead, they have emphasized on the social and environmental sources of patterns of development. They've also called attention to social dynamics, which Freud ignored completely. Freud's psychological theories are disputed today, and many leading psychiatrists disregard him. On the other hand, there are also many psychiatrists 
who, and counselors who can agree at least with the core of his work. Although Freud was long regarded as a genius, psychiatry and psychology have been recast as scientific disciplines in recent times. Psychiatric disorders are now considered purely diseases of the brain, the causes of which are mainly considered to be genetic. This indicates that childhood and environment don't have much influence on the human mind and its well-being. However, many people reject Freud's view as an oversimplification and also criticize his rejection of positivism. Behaviorism, evolutionary psychology and cognitive psychology reject psychoanalysis as a pseudoscience. Humanistic psychology maintains that psychoanalysis is a demeaning and incorrect view of human beings. The other schools of psychology have produced alternate methods of psychotherapy to psychoanalysis, including behavior therapy, cognitive therapy, and person-centered psychotherapy. In recent times, psychoanalysis has lost popularity as research has gained a more scientific perspective regarding motivation and mental health. However, the influences of Freud's theories can be found throughout psychology and its components are incorporated in many current variations of therapy. I enjoyed teaching you all the details of psychosexual theory. I hope you enjoyed the session as much as I did. Thank you.